uh, I will talk about um, our new uh, educational and prototyping IoT platform we call CatCube. But first of all, <coughs> there is an outline of this, of this talk. But first of all, let's uh, have a look at some kind of advertisement because this is your new, uh, <coughs> new point in Czech Republic. This is the place what you have to definitely visit. This is uh, Pilsen, you might know it's through beer or technical or culture, heritage and long history. <coughs> you have to visit Pilsen, so that's that's end of the advertisement. This is something about, about our university. We are the technical university with uh, more than 50, uh, 50 years uh, tradition. Uh, we are a full range university, including technical faculties. I'm coming from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering. <coughs> and we are located here. So now we are here. We have to go about 500 kilometers uh, to the west, and you are there. <coughs> uh, recently, we started a project called Smart Campus, which is a test pad for IoT technologies. And we are hiring for uh, collaboration. So if you uh, have, if you are from industry and you have some technology you want to test before deployment, we are open to cooperate with you. So this is also a kind of adver advertisement, but it's closely related to, to this talk. All right. This is our campus, and we are deploying uh, some technologies. We are providing testing for municipalities before deployment. We are cooperating with industrial partners <coughs> to provide a feedback to them and to, to test their technologies in, uh, in the area of the university because um, under the influence of technically equipped students, hackers, etc. That's, that's a great place for testing your hardware ideas, I would say. Now, the motivation to be here <coughs> and to, uh, to create this, uh, this kind of thing we call get -key. Uh, the CatCube has been developed at the Department of Technologies and Measurements of our university because, uh, because uh, we solve many um, IoT related projects or projects which has an IoT part and because we decided to publish or to open this open hardware, uh, to, to this hardware project to be an open hardware project, we want to attract new users and ask for feedback, naturally. So this is why I'm, why I'm here. <coughs> this is a um, small help, how to spell the name of the cat cube, because the cat is shortcut of our department in Czech, and it's spelled like uh, this small, nice animal. So this is why this uh, tricky name is spelled like cat cube. <coughs> now, the reasons behind the creation of such a project are technical and educational. Because we are a university, we need to paint both, uh, both areas. As I mentioned, we require to create a point of integration for a number of projects we, we are working on at, at our department. So CatCube is a point of integration for hardware and software modules. Uh, it is uh, it, it enables to the deployment to many different environments, including uh, <coughs> low power wire area networks, uh, point to point based networks, or no network laboratory validation, etc. And enables uh, speed up of prototyping phase and test series deployment. And in the same time, it, we use it in educational process as a platform bringing to our students a mid-complexity system, hardware, both in hardware and software, in contrast to, for example, Arduino, when we talk about software, which is too simple for technical students, and uh, maybe projects like Free or Aptos, which are too complicated for one semester course, I would say. And because uh, this is uh, designed as an entry point, uh, for students to a uh, hardware world, uh, we choose to follow industry standards 
uh, to avoid uh, any confusing by using documentation, by reading documentation and using tools. <coughs> These are uh, parts of the projects currently available at GitHub or on GitHub. Uh, this includes some hardware, so mainboard, battery board, and uh, naturally firmware and documentation. Additionally, there are some tools uh, enabling uh, simple demonstration or or or, <coughs> or customization uh, of uh, of the server side of the software for, for example, Oravan network. <coughs> now. Let's uh, go into detail. Uh, as I mentioned, we are targeted on industry standard tools. It's uh, about firmware and uh, also hardware or PCB design. Uh, our auditorium in, at the university, the, the students are both uh, firmware developers and, for example, electronic engineers. So. These two areas are important for educational uh, process use GetCube 4. Uh, <coughs> for firmware, we use uh, the industry standard tools for STM32 uh, MCUs. Uh, these are, for example, K or True Studio provided by, by uh, STM itself. But the situation with PCB or with hardware is a bit complicated because there is a huge incompatibility between uh, uh, tools. If you design something in Altium Designer, you cannot open uh, your design files in, uh, in KiCad or Eagle. So we decided to open <coughs> the sample projects for many, many of these, uh, these tools, but the projects are currently still under review. <coughs> then we have uh, industry style documentation. As I said, it is to avoid, avoid uh, confusion when reading data sheets from Texas Instruments and uh, ST. So uh, our recommendation has the same style. We have a platform data sheet, we have application notes to describe some particular cases. We naturally have the readmes, but the readme is not the main, uh, main uh, communication uh, or documentation uh, recommendation thing we use, as I said, the main thing is data sheet, application notes, and the other, uh, other tools used, uh, used uh, in the field, for example, Oxygen for documentation, etc. This is the, the typical project life cycle for which CatCube is, uh, which CatCube is designed for. Uh, <coughs> the first two phases, prototyping and validation, uh, is Normally, uh, these are normally the phases uh, where the development of new project uh, is done. Uh, for example, you can develop a new, uh, new sensor, so you will design a custom board, uh, you will design a firmware driver for this, uh, this uh, sensor board, you will perform a validation, and then in the <coughs> next two uh, stages, We'll just use the infrastructure which is provided by CatCube itself. So uh, the first two points are development or validation, and the next two points are, in fact, CatCube reconfiguration. <coughs> uh, this is how hardware looks like. Uh, we have a main board, which is important, and we have some extension boards. We decided to reuse existing standards, so we support the uh, so-called microbus standard, which shows to use many ready-to-use uh, uh, sensor boards developed by Microelectronica. Uh, we adopted this standard into our custom socket called GitHub socket, which is uh, in fact a bigger version of the of the uh, microbus socket, allowing some uh, allowing placement of a bigger uh, mechanical parts in between sockets, still being uh, very, very small, uh, which allows to deployment of uh, of uh, the CAD cube ports uh, into into field. So you can uh, take tens of uh, development boards itself. These are very small, 
uh, and you can put it into field and provide some uh, rapid uh, rapid validation or in-field validation by using dev boards. In fact. This is the hardware core platform. This is uh, Murata type EBZ, which is a system in package, including uh, STS MCU and uh, Semtex radio, uh, providing LoRa uh, LoRa modulation, uh, LoRa communication cap capability and uh, relative humidity and temperature sensor. So these two, uh, these two chips or packages are placed on the main board. Uh, this allows to use just the main board as uh, primitive, but ready to use uh, uh, basic environmental sensor for, for example, LoRaWA networks and, or SQL networks. This is the overview of the hardware which is specialized into core drivers, modules, and module drivers. <coughs> uh, here's another view of the firmware, where on the top it, there is it, there is its uh, core, uh, which takes care about execution control and configuration, uh, manages configuration and user interface, then the Cube core drivers, which are required by core, and then modules, modules itself, they implement the uh, the actual functionality of, uh, of the IoT device. On the right hand side, there is some state machine demonstrating the common uh, <coughs> IoT node uh, life cycle, which is in fact uh, the state machine followed by CAT Cube Core uh, during the execution control. The CAT Cube one is a little bit complicated, but still the same. Here is uh, demonstrated a killing feature, I would say, of the CatQ platform. These five uh, lines of configuration uh, enable the uh, temperature and humidity sensing, uh, sensing by using uh, the CatQ mainboard only in a LoRaWAN network. So if you will download uh, a PCB design files, you will manufacture uh, our board, and you will take our firmware, you enter these few lines of configuration code into the command line interface of CatCube, you have a, a fully operational IoT device providing temperature and relative humidity measurements. Now, finally, a few use cases. This is the uh, environmental sensor in my office. This is just out of the box functionality of, of CatU platform itself. And this demonstrates some um, flexibility of CatCube for rapid prototyping. It is a uh, textile capacitive sensor developed by my, uh, my colleagues. There is some dev board uh, for Texas Instruments uh, capacity to digital converter. And there behind the smallest part is uh, CatCube connected to, to this dev board. It's enclosed in a standard box, and uh, this was about two or three days of uh, yeah, prototyping to get a demonstrator of the uh, textile sensor uh, sensor device. So uh, finally, I have here some future work, and I would like to ask for feedback or con uh, or contribution here in at, at, at this forum. So if you have any. Uh, Anything to tell to this uh, list of uh, future work or anything, any, any point to, to my presentation, please let me know now or, or later. So, thank you for, for your presentation, for, for your attention. So, 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 I think we have a lot of time for questions, so if you have any questions. Yeah. Uh, how does it handle the updates? Let's say I have one thousand sensors and to deploy a software update to all of them. Is there any relationship? Currently, there is no over-air update functionality. In fact, um, it is designed to operate in many different networks. For example, Sigfox is uh, a network where where CatCube itself can be used, and there it is quite impossible to provide over-the-air functionality because of uh, 
you can transmit few bytes only uh, to the to the touch device. So there is it, there it is impossible for LoRa one. There is partially possible, but uh, yeah, well, there are lots of limitations in, in many in many uh, wide area networks. But there are plans to uh, to extend the, uh, or to integrate, the, for example. Uh, narrow band uh, connectivity, and then there would be some room for over air uh, over air updates. But uh, currently, we don't have this this functionality. Yeah. yeah. This is currently under development. Yeah. The the remote configuration is currently under development. In fact, the developer sits there. Yeah. So what about security solution? Yeah, <laughs> the security is, uh, uh, in fact, yeah, that is the right question. The the security is dependent on at first the implemented uh, networks. I would say there are <coughs> well uh, standard ways, uh, standard ways. Uh, Provided by standards we implemented are are implemented also here in in CAD cube, but uh, there is a tricky way in CAD cube how to compromise this device because it provides the terminal. In fact, if you have access to the terminal, you can do anything. So if you have physical access to this device, you you can do anything. You can naturally omit the, the terminal, you can exclude it when building, uh, when building the device, but uh, yeah, if you have physical access to this device, you, you will have the keys, for example. Even if there is no terminal, you can, you can download your EEPROM and then you also can obtain, obtain security keys, for example. There are vulnerabilities, but still this is uh, mainly the dev platform, so it's acceptable, I think. Or if your question was targeted to another no, era. Uh, so there probably has to, so maybe a question to you. Are you concerned only about the like the, the end devices or also about some framework that's like gathering data out of them and like Yeah, we use standard infrastructure as defined by for example LoRaWAN standard. So everything uh, from the device to the network server is defined by the standard and it follows the standard. So it also follows the, the security security requirements of the standard. So that's it. But if you have physical physical access to the device, then you have a problem. Or if the attacker has the physical access to this device, you have a problem. Or if if you have injected servers, so that's that's true. <coughs> Yeah? Okay, may I may ask a very stupid question. Uh, why? You know, like, uh, like uh, what is the goal of this project uh, which would uh, differentiate it from uh, the similar uh, project? Yeah. For example, even you mentioned Arduino. Or, or, or. Yeah. Uh, yeah. V oh, I tried to explain, but maybe, maybe the explanation was wrong or, or poor. Uh, uh, there are educational reasons and there are technical reasons. The educational reason is to find a mid-complexity between uh, the stupid simplicity of Arduino, I would say, and uh, uh, two complex uh, systems in comparison. That was, that was the, the, the first thing. And the second thing uh, is the reusability of, uh, of the uh, parts of this project. Because as, uh, according to best of my knowledge, there is no project uh, no open hardware project implementing reusability of both hardware and software modules, modules such a way like uh, like this one. B maybe you, you know something, but yeah, I I I did some 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 research. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I understand why, why, why this That's true, but, but if you use Arduino, then, you know, uh, in fact, 
if you use Arduino Not and Arduino Way, you just uh, um, Arduino puts some. Um, it's not too simple as to use uh, Atmega itself from from the scratch. Yeah. Yeah. It's simpler to use Atmega from scratch than to uh, to fight against Arduino yeah. IDE and, yeah. and etc. You know. So we started from uh, from uh, different MCU than, than Arduino, it's more powerful CPU, but uh, trying to build a friendly ecosystem, well-documented ecosystem for students and also for some makers, developers, etc. Uh, are you planning to you know, some ways uh, of, of, of popularizing by, for example, I don't know, selling boards or, 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 you know, because for yeah. many, Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, currently it's the university project, but one of our partners, uh, a company from Pilsen, already manufactures this mm -hmm. and resells the resells the uh, the dev boards or dev packages for for makers. So you can buy it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for questions.